Hi again, everyone. Um, welcome to episode three of Father Offspring Interviews. Um, it's been really great to see your questions coming in on our submission form, so please keep those coming. Um, and we're really excited to get to answering some of them today. There's some really, really neat stuff being asked. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, if we mispronounce anyone's names, please correct us in the comments. All right, you ready? Okay, yes. great. Um, so to start, um, Hannah from Germany slash Syria asks, um, how exactly do you explain humans having a primal need for art, religion, and morality? Hmm. Morality, um, that's the easiest one to take on because it's not a human invention. Um, the notion was that morality is something that comes out of Sunday morning sermons in church or that sort of thing. Clearly the rudiments of morality, theory of mind, sense of justice, sense of reconciliation as a good behavior. We're not the only species that shows that. Um, and I think we've posted somewhere a note about Franz Duval, amazing primatologist who very sadly died a few days ago, um, who pioneered all that work. So if you're going to ask where morality comes from, it didn't come from just being humans. It's way older than us. Religion, we have a need for it because life is scary as hell because we're the only biological machines who know that we're biological machines and someday our hearts are going to stop beating and it's psychologically stressful and all and it's one version of getting some answers uh for my money answers that don't hold up very well to close examination uh but nonetheless um art aesthetics all of that there's been kind of a debate in the field is the human propensity towards art like every culture as music as a something um amazing convergence across cultures and sort of the motifs of music rhythms which some cool studies done with that but is this something we have been selected to have or is this something that's just been carried on if you're going to have a brain that's this complicated for lots of other reasons aesthetics just kind of pops out there uh steven pinker i think has described that as this aesthetics just like kind of the frosting on top of like human cognition or is it really advantageous and i think I don't know. I think that I don't know, but it's incredibly interesting and so interesting that you could take people from all over the world, from different cultures, and they can recognize another culture's lullabies and be able to identify it as such. Another culture's martial, aggressive music, things that there's some universals about that. It was just random baggage being carried along. Um, it's been carried along pretty decisively in humans. Our next question is from Anna from Oregon, um, who says, um, being alive right now is amazing, but if you could live in any past civilization or as an archaic hominin, uh, what species or time period or civilization would you choose? Oh, that's a great one. Definitely archaic hominin, just because, you know, I'm a primatologist but it would be incredibly cool to hang out with neanderthals or earlier hominins or whatever even the hobbit from you know indonesian islands that appears to be the strangest hominin that's ever lived what i would most want to do is be around okay here's what i would want to be around for two things it would be amazing to be able to observe the very first time that hominins buried a dead loved one. And there's increasing evidence to suggest that was by Neanderthals, not by what became modern humans. And I guess the other is I would desperately want to be able to observe the first hominins, the first invention of a knock-knock joke. That would be amazing. Okay, this next question um, from Haley from Canada is actually for me. Um, uh, they asked, what was it like growing up as the child of parents with such amazing knowledge of behavior and neuroscience and that you have no free will? Um, I mean, it was obviously wonderful. I've, I, I think I've been lucky in many ways in life, but none more so than um, having been born to pretty much two of the greatest humans ever. Um, 
don't listen to this. Okay. Um, no, okay. I wish, I wish I had, I wish I had a more insightful or sort of specific answer here, but I think to be honest, like our lack of free will was kind of always a given to me, um, as was sort of the atheism, but, um, but I'd say the main, the main thing is that we were really raised to like perceive the world, perceive others through this lens that like, you know, behaviors are a result of factors out of our control. Um, and thus to try to have a little bit more understanding for others, even for sort of the negative or like undesirable like behaviors. And I think for myself and, and my negative behaviors as well. Um, but it was also, I mean, it was just like neat to like, you know, watch my badass parents like casually like blow dart guns from time to time and stuff. So um, it was pretty great. Yeah, that to sum it up. All right, we have our next question, uh, which is posed by um, Agnesa from Russia slash USA. Um, and they ask, if we look at the personalities who have influenced the world order, life, made new discoveries, celebrities, and art, these are personalities with sort of mental deviations. Do genius and madness go hand in hand? Where is the line between eccentricity and illness? Oh, that's a good one. Um, it's a classic one. Uh, by the way, it's great to see somebody who can simultaneously be from Russia and the US in these troubled, dichotomized times. Madness, creativity, all of that, that idea has floated around for a long time, uh, particularly madness of the psychosis type, madness of the bipolar disorder type that uh, associated with great creativity, all of that. And for the most part, um, that's bullshit. Um, when you look at, there is indeed an elevated connection between highly creative people and the incidence of mood disorders, particularly manic depression, Oh, well, there you go. There's the answer. But when you look more closely, in general, the creativity was not occurring during the most psychiatrically disturbed periods. And in fact, those periods were often what destroyed the careers of these people, these creative people. Um, amid that also, the legitimate question is, okay, so normal to charmingly whimsical to eccentric to mentally, where is the border drawn? And the obvious thing is there is no border. It's arbitrary boundaries that vary tremendously by culture. Uh, final ranting thing with that, Oh, cool. So there's at least some association between creativity and madness. And sometimes mad people are the same ones in a mad world. And they're the ones who see the world for what this is horrible, like neo 1960s hippie, warm feeling stuff that came out in effect saying, sometimes being psychiatrically ill has hidden blessings unexpected gifts that you have to see the world differently. And this is like a disastrously wrong move. Be mentally ill, know someone who's mentally ill, anything, and you will know there are no hidden blessings to any of these diseases. That's just sheer romanticism that can wind up being very damaging. All right, we're going to pivot a little bit on that note, um, because next is a question from Aklesh from Nepal, um, but this was also asked by a number of others. Um, did you always have long hair and a beard? Aklesh from Nepal, that is very cool. That's very pleasing. Um, I haven't always had a beard. I'm fairly sure I did not have one as a fetus. Um, I've actually never shaved in my life. And that's mainly because when sort of the peach fuzz was first coming in, my refusal to shave then clearly irritated my parents enormously. And that was such a successful strategy that I still have this beard half a century later. So it's always been there. And the long hair just added the insult to injury with my parents. And thus I'm still carrying on that petulant battle. Finally, uh, we have we have a question from Ricardo from Rome, Italy, who asks, what is your favorite TV show and why is it Breaking Bad? Aha, Ricardo, you have read my book Behave or somewhere in passing. I note that I'm a Breaking Bad fanatic. It's like the most amazing. I would say Shakespearean, but like I'm, I have read next to no Shakespeare. So that's just like posturing for me to say Shakespearean, but incredibly Shakespearean 
arc of the moral decline of Walter White and totally fascinating and like horrifying and amazing theater. And all these years later, I'm still heartbroken spoiler alert that something very bad happened to one of the characters who most people liked very much i'll say nothing more than that but an incredible piece of exploration of the capacity for human evil even though i don't believe in evil all right that that's all that we have time for for this episode yeah so we're loving your questions so please keep submitting them um, at the forum found in the instagram story highlight and bio um, or the YouTube video description. And I'm Offspring Sherzbulski, and thanks for your continued support of Science and the Beard. And don't forget, if it's going to rain, bring an umbrella. Signing out.